features, but uh, I think we should uh, uh, focus on that. Uh, if there is any question in the audience, so let me give you the mic. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Irina for this great speech uh, because, well, she started it with uh, uh, those two days focusing on the human uh, dimension and I'd like to answer that it was great speech also in terms of the um, uh, of what I felt. Uh, I felt so many emotions uh, because we can, once again, we can say about the Ministry of Culture, about them operating, and we can say that, we, we can speak to this, uh, this ministry as to the partner. So uh, thank you for that. And the question is, uh, you've presented so much data, and some of them uh, cause questions, just, just one number. So you said uh, there is w over 1,000 museums, uh, including the museum uh, uh, headed by Vasily Grushko, uh, and they said about over 2,000 museums. I understand that we have this uh, Crimea and uh, Donetsk situations, uh, but uh, still I, want, uh, I, I wonder why is there is such a huge gap between uh, this data and how should we get oriented in that data and how can we use it in order to build and rebuild the culture in Ukraine because, as we said, uh, like th this approach should be more evidence-based. So I'll be brief. These numbers are prepared, uh, are from the prepared uh, register of the network of cultural institutions. You know that for many years we've been talking about this register of cultural heritage. We keep talking about it, but we hope that this register will uh, appear and then there will be different numbers. Uh, so the numbers about the uh, fund, the resources uh, and the collection is uh, classified and we cannot uh, expose that data today. Uh, we have uh, we have problems of this classified information, and so these numbers are approximate. And thank you for emphasizing that that these numbers are approximate because uh, it's not only hard to count culture in uh, in general, but uh, even harder in Ukraine. Uh, today, the state statistical office stopped gathering the information uh, until the war ends. Uh, which uh, puts us in the situation when we are disoriented uh, about the, uh, those statistical numbers. And the only thing we have uh, is uh, the taxes. Uh, so, that, I mean, the tax service, uh, tax authority gives us some numbers and we can see the decrease of the taxes paid uh, by some cultural institutions uh, for uh, by 60% in the first qu quarter. And based on that, we can make some forecasts. As for the number of cultural institutions, indeed, th those numbers should be verified. Uh, my question is also for Irina. I really appreciate your speech because this is the first time that I face the ministry in such fa with such face, if I can say that. You've mentioned the Biennale, uh, and uh, so as of uh, February 23, when the project was uh, the final stage, and over 90,000 euros was spent on that by that time, uh, now, uh, no, like no single dollar came to the accounts of Biennale, uh, although the team was informed and aware of that uh, well in advance, and they were prepared for implementing this project. And so I believe uh, that uh, the problems that can be easily justified by the war uh, they are more structural for the ministry and they are not really related to the war. Does the ministry realize 
that this great image of this musical conductor with the sea that you've just described, it's really far, uh, it was far uh, from the war. Uh, in fact, yes, this is this, it is related to the system, but only because the system is much bigger and it works and looks in uh, a bit different way. Uh, it has a player like the Ministry of Finance and the Culture Ministry uh, trying to advocate the needs of the industry uh, also faces some misunderstanding or as, as mentioned was mentioned yesterday, uh, there's this prioritization and um, what how those priori priorities should be set is not clear and not understandable for us. And yesterday, the uh, co fellow colleague from Slovakia uh, spoke about the, that uh, management approach to the measurement, to the count of uh, profit from the culture uh, is bad for culture. But unfortunately, uh, the budget code of Ukraine is made uh, in such a way that we should like count or measure uh, culture in terms of finance uh, performance as well. Uh, that's why this fight for the uh, budget uh, is really bad uh, for the uh, culture and culture always loses there. I don't know if anything's gonna change, but I can say um, that, you know, culture is a complicated topic to discuss because it's huge and it's hard to see it because it's everywhere. And uh, when trying to talk about some material world, uh, world of ideas, this is still the part of culture and we don't see those uh, connections, uh, which cannot always be explained to decision makers, including those financial decisions. And so there's where this huge problem lies and the government uh, poses a threat to the projects uh, that are important for it. And as for the human face of the ministry, I've been working here for three months only, uh, so I also have all the chances to get, uh, chances to get assimilated with the ministry. Uh, we have two more questions. And I'd like to add, uh, uh, to start with the question to Masha, uh, if we're not talking about the sea and the musical conductor, then what would the metaphor be? Uh, for me, uh, the trigger is uh, what was discussed uh, these days, uh, that Ukraine surviving and, be, and developing, developing is kind of a mixture of horizontal connections where uh, many agents took responsibility. But, uh, you know, as it was said, uh, when th there's always this complaining uh, for the person in charge who like is doing something wrong and doesn't realize, doesn't understand what's going on. So I think this question is open. Uh, how this uh, hypothetical business as usual before war didn't meet the needs or the requests of um, cu the cultural uh, sphere. Uh, and so if we don't change it now, I think it will be much harder uh, to change that uh, later. And coming back to this metaphor uh, of the uh, military force, I can say that, well, I have a lot of uh, friends in the military now, and they say that uh, army is also not, um, doesn't have the same structure. There are, uh, but still they have the structure when there is this uh, approval or order from someone from the top. Uh, they value the life of a soldier. Uh, and so those who are uh, like down on this hierarchy, 
uh, they uh, still have uh, different, um, they, they still still have this value of the human life, and it's like that the commander in chief decides whether they uh, should uh, die or not. Uh, but uh, they still have some power. Uh, and so this is for us to reimagine this structure. It's the open question for me. And I think that if not now, uh, there, there's no other timing for that. And so as for that metaphor, Masha, what would be yours? The black, uh, the, the dark uh, matter. Well, so it's fine. We moved from the uh, conductor, musical conductor to the interstellar. Unfortunately, we're out of time for questions. Uh, so I think uh, you can catch our speakers during the coffee break. Uh, thank you for speeches. I've really enjoyed your idea of moving from sporadic support to the more strategical ones. And I think um, uh, that uh, in indeed we should work with this element of C and not just conduct it uh, uh, while it's possible.